What do you do with your so that isn't normal? We have a kiss monster, spoiler alert. It's me with a blanket over my head, that visits my so every now and gives him loads of kisses before slinking off again into the night. We have never acknowledged that I am in fact, the kiss monster. We do, inverted kissing, instead of kissing the lips. One of us surprises the other by opening their mouth big and covering the other party's puckered up lips. It's like kissing the void. It feels really f***ing uncomfortable and it's hilarious. She always does it to me when I'm expecting a kiss. Bonus points if you can kiss the void for over 5 seconds or have your open mouth over their mouth for a long time. We discovered this when I jokingly opened my mouth during a kiss and she started laughing and going, no. We'll open our mouths and put our lips together, then sing a pitch and very very slightly raise and lower it together and it creates this weird vibrating dissonance with the notes. My wife usually gets home before I do from work and as soon as I enter she comes to me and we both do a little dance while singing in Bollywood song Mera Piya Garaya My Love Has Reached Home, and, then we hug and greet. It's a little thing which has turned into some sort of ritual. We love it. One day I rang the bell. Before she unlocked the door she asks, What's the password? I replied in a low tone Mera Piya Garaya in the same tune. She was expecting me to say something clever but she enjoyed the song even more because I have a bad voice. We have a 17 year running game of stealthily pinning a clothespin to the other's clothes. Sometimes, no clothespin for months. And then bam, one in your armpit. We often just stand in each other's way for no reason other than to be annoying. Well, I just wrapped her up in a brown blanket, rolled her back and forth in bed and told her shush be bread, it's okay, just be bread, shush, loaf girlfriend, it's okay to become bread while she cackled and screamed I don't want to be bread. My ex used to want me to body slam her onto the bed all the time. She still loves it bro. Dated a Swede for a few years, when he taught me how to say I love you in Swedish. Jag Alska Dig, I remembered how to pronounce it by saying it as Jog Race Car Day. For the rest of our relationship whenever we wanted to say love you or would give each other cards etc. We would just say race car. We invented rock, paper, scissors with kissing, mouth closed equals rock, mouth open equals paper, tongue sticking out equals scissors. It devolved into doing it randomly so that we could catch each other by surprise and win. Penis drawings. I don't remember who started it but we hide the same penis drawing for the other one to find. She put it in my suitcase when I went away on a hunting trip with my buddies and I had to explain why I had a crudely drawn wang on a sheet of notebook paper packed with my socks. When I returned I hid in the bottom of her underwear drawer and it took her a few months to find it. She then hid it somewhere and I haven't found it yet. That was five years ago. She told me I'll find it eventually but I'm afraid of where it might be. I have told her that if she dies before me that she is getting buried with it and I win. Listen to his weird tummy sounds. I like to vocalize the really loud ones. We touch our butts together every night before bed and do a little wiggle. It's part of our routine now and must be done for optimal sleeping. I draw faces on my boobs with washable markers to send to him to cheer him up. We sneak up on each other and bite each other on the neck to assert dominance. We use the dominance to win trivial arguments like who do our animals love more. While we're in the shower he'll cover his body with soap, wrap his arms around me, and then go up and down really fast so he's rubbing the soap all over me and cleaning me off. We call this Carl Wash cause it's like a car wash for me. But my nickname is Carl N. He's washing me off. We hoot like owls at each other and call each other Hooter as pet names. It started shortly after we got together and neither of us can remember how. But we'll be sitting in silence, each doing our own thing. And one of us will just say hoot into the quiet. And the other replies in kind. It's sort of a doing good, me too, love you thing. Sometimes when I answer the phone I become Detective Tony Pepperoni, and he's Cheesy Steve and the Saucy Boys. There's never really any warning, it just kinda happens and it gets pretty intense. Alright this will take some explaining but me and my husband have a game we call Business Business. 
I can't fully remember how it came about but the goal is to fully and completely clasp the other person's right hand in yours and shake it twice while repeating business business. If the other person can get their hand free or shout business business at the same time it's a failed attempt. We don't keep score but the last person who got in a successful handshake is the winner until they are dethroned. So what started as a little inside joke has spiraled into a full competition with such notable wins as at my uncle's funeral. While reaching for an offered water bottle we live in the desert and in the middle of any and all arguments. It's gotten so bad that any time either of us try to hold hands we both have a momentary standoff to make sure it's not a ploy. We have a mating dance that has gotten increasingly elaborate in the decade we have been together. Example moves. Slapping one's own butt. Moving one's arms like a choo-choo train. One-handed clapping. Some of the moves go out of fashion year to year. But we have a significant repertoire. Sometimes he puts his mouth over my nose and blows. Causing me to make a horrific, monstrous sound of air coming through my nasals and out of my mouth. We call this the exorcism. It's gross and weird but I love that we can be gross and weird together. We have the wick rule. If one of us says, would you kindly blah 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 the other one must, no matter what, do that thing. There is zero negotiation. It's mostly whipped out for benign stuff. Sometimes for very silly stuff. But occasionally used in serious situations. It's equal parts silly, fake outage, and a deep, committed trust. It only works because we trust each other not to abuse wick or use it for evil. We puff out our bellies and make them touch so that the babies can talk to each other. I'm not pregnant and he's definitely not pregnant. I give her a butt massage every single night before she goes to bed. My girlfriend and I will every so often just lift our top up and say tits until the other one looks, acknowledges. I always do this to my girlfriend, and when she finally looks I say ha, gay, I've done many things to bait her so that I get to call her gay. Maybe this isn't that abnormal but my husband and I match our snacks to whatever we are watching, Napoleon Dynamite, better have the tots, finding Nemo, probably getting sushi, etc. We love the feel of our skin touching, like his chest on mine skin on skin. Once while walking a hiking bike trail we were discussing it and being silly like we are we decided to pull our shirts up and like rub our bellies against each other. That exact moment a man came around the corner on his bike to see two weirdos in the woods with their shirts raised and their bellies touching. Lol we still laugh about that awkward moment. I doubt many other couples non-sexually rub bellies. What started as a simple whistle to get the other's attention has turned into a full-blown second language consisting of nothing but whistles. Hello is a simple high-tone whistle followed by a slightly lower tone whistle. To properly say hello back you must respond with an even higher pitched whistle sequence or a slightly lower pitched sequence. Warning, danger or distress is three high-pitched whistles. A sad whistle is one that starts high then quickly goes to a low tone. We've legit had phone conversations where we whistle at each other and laugh for 10 minutes. We thought we were insane still but until realizing there are cultures out there that whistle poetry to each other and that whistling may have been the first way peeps communicated with each other. Me and my girlfriend have started using very random and increasing complex pet names when we answer a phone call from one another. It's so often now that sometimes I'll forget and in public loudly answer with hello my Persian tropical ice cream sweetie watermelon minx. Or something to that effect. It changes every time. Armpit trust. It's the number one rule that cannot be violated. No matter how tempting it might be, you can't poke the other's armpit. While I understand the desire for armpit trust, I would give it up in a second for the joy that comes from poking armpits. We've been married for 32 years. We're both professionals in Korea with kids no longer at home. Yet for our entire marriage whenever one of us travels we do something special for the one traveling. My wife's method is to sneak into my luggage and leave little love notes and comments and requests for a hot call on colored cards. I'm talking I'll pull on a dress shirt and discover a little card in the pocket that says. Call me at 11 o'clock my time hot stuff. The people at my work where I travel to the same location now laugh when I reach into a coat pocket, pull one out and read it, or they see the collection in the pocket of my backpack.
I travel 8 to 12 times a year so this is some work. My approach is a little different. I write one very romantic or passionate letter or story or poem. Or I sketch something I found beautiful and add a small note. She has saved them over the years so not only one per time she travels but Mother's Day or birthday. Or sometimes random desire to let her know I love her. It's now a small book. Also, we always end the day in a call together. Even if I'm in Mumbai and one of us has to stay up until 1 a.m. or get up at 4 a.m., we always tell each other we love them and good night. She still tells me the most romantic thing ever was one time I typed two pages of reasons why I loved her then cut them up into tiny pink strips numbered of course and then went through all of her personal stuff and hide them in places only she would find them, like one inside a pocket in every jacket. One inside her thick and thin gloves, one per drawer in her dresser, one in her makeup kit suitcase, and so on. It took her more than seven months to find them all. She said it made her day to find one four months on. Just stumble across it. I did get this from the author of a book called 101 Passionate Nights. So I can't take credit for the idea, but it was a total surprise to her. Those two pages of taped together comments are also in her book of love notes. Yes. She tells me I'm more romantic and mushy than she is. Straight up wrestle for fun. Not like sexy way or the cute let the other one win way. But like actual competition. Honey, stop hitting me with the folding chair while we're at the dinner table. Please. We harvest each other's goosebumps. When one of us gets goosebumps on our skin, the other will run their hands up and down on their skin collecting them. We don't know where the other one is most of the time. When we go out separately to each friend's parties we send a code text to check in. He sends Marco and I answer Polo. We actually started that when our friends insisted we had to keep track of each other due to the wave of violence and crime in our country. We talk to each other sometimes in different voices and characters we collected over the years to make the other laugh, annoyed, uncomfortable etc and just f*** so. I often do speak with various accents while she pitches her voice super high and we keep going till one of us gives up. When me and my ex would get into dumb arguments, debates we used to send it to council to be reviewed. There was no council, there would be no review. It was basically our way of shelving an argument that would never have a winner. Every now and then we'd ask each other if we've gotten an update from council on what the judgment was. Cuddle or hold hands while fighting. It reminds us that we're not fighting against each other. We need to understand each other and work through the issue. I run out of the bathroom after brushing my teeth in the morning yelling fresh mouth and he gets so excited and puckers up for a kiss. Every time. Sometimes when we're kissing, we'll catch each other off guard by blowing a puff of air into their mouth to inflate their cheeks. As an interracial couple, the wifey and I like to play a little game called you people. When we're out in public and engaged in conversation, one of us will spontaneously and loudly ask the other, what do you mean you people? To which the other must respond as sincerely as possible. Well, you know, and then fill in the blank with a random factoid about them. Like, people who sleep with socks on, you win points when you turn heads. Extra points if a bystander laughs. We stand like three feet away from each other and make Street Fighter idle animations at each other for minutes on end. He absolutely must touch my butt at least once every time we go to Walmart. I can't even remember how this started, but it's totally weird if we forget. And floor dollar, a dollar bill that had fallen out of one of our pockets in the washer, and consequently fell down into the crack between the machines when I was transferring the clothes to the dryer. We both ignored it for like year because we were too lazy to use a broom or whatever to fish it out. And then one of us finally acknowledged it to the other. We decided to leave it there as a symbol of our wealth. We've never been down to our last dollar. It now has a quarter for a friend. I thought it was not normal shine a flashlight through my boyfriend's stretched ball skin. Needless to say light really shines through ball skin. It only started recently, but my boyfriend grabs my lips like one would grab an Oreo and kisses me like that. 